um, today Easter Sunday, so there's a lot of happy Easter, uh, praise God Easter, and so on and so forth. But in reality, what does the Bible say? The word Easter is a, is a ridiculous translation of the Greek word Pascha. Pascha is Passover. See, it refers to the Passover. But only in one place, in Acts chapter 12, when you read verse 4, that same word that's been translated 26 or 27 times as, uh, as Passover is suddenly translated Easter. Question is why? Not in all the translations. Most translations stay with the right word Passover. But in the King, King James translation and a few others, they use the, the, the word Easter. And it's misleading because in the etymology of words, Easter comes from Eshta, which is a Babylonian goddess. So at different times, they worshipped that goddess. So that Easter being thrown in there, you wonder, what, what is this? Why are they doing this? And guess what? All over the world, that's the word that is chosen. A word that is used only once out of over 25 uh, times of use. 28, to be precise. It's, it's translated only once as Easter, and that's what's going around the world. Why is it so? Subliminal messages. But thank God, it got arrested and um, it's even now Christianized. So that's why we're not fighting it. That's why we're not trying to tell people don't, don't, don't say it, don't use it. Because it lost the power. It was a misnomer. They tried to throw it in there. The translators were misled. But it lost its power. It lost its power. So we call it Easter or whatever you want to call it is fine, but just so you know how these things play out. So they hijack the exercises, call them yoga, and yoga has a, a connotation to a certain religious background. They don't tell you that. And so they say, oh, it's normal, it's just exercise. But like Pastor Larry said, why, why do you give it that particular name? So it's got to have some root from somewhere. Then the next thing you know is you are having to say some words that you don't even know the meaning. You have to recite those words. Now you're talking to demons and you don't know. And the Bible shows us that we can communicate and have fellowship with demons without knowing. And that's why Paul warned. He said, I don't want you to have fellowship with demons. Because he knew that they wouldn't realize that's what they're doing. So he told us, he says, the sacrifices that the Gentiles offer, they're not offering to God, but to demons. And I don't want you to be in fellowship with demons. So some of those words, some of those incantations, some of those things they're doing may look or sound harmless. But where are you going to go next after that? So the Bible tells us, be sober, be vigilant. Be vigilant, be watchful. Be watchful. This is why you must know the Word of God. This is why you must know the Bible. You must know the Scriptures. As a Christian, you have to. Don't be like everybody else. You're a Christian. You need to know the Bible. If you don't know the Bible, remember what he says. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. My people, God said so. He says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge.
He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. All over the world, Christians and non-Christians alike celebrate Easter. The word Easter appearing only once in the scriptures goes without understanding for many. Some even arguing whether Christians should celebrate Easter at all. Like, yeah, it's, it's just amazing to me. You know, if you look at history, if you look at the Bible, what you come up with, and there's no denying the pagan origins of Easter. One of the foundational things to understand in regards to understanding Jewish teaching as it relates to Jesus is understanding how Jesus completes the Passover. Easter as seen in its only biblical reference in the book of Acts chapter 12 and verse 4 means Passover, referring to the Jewish celebration of God's grace extended in the punishment of their captors and the consummation of their liberty, both in one night. Passover signifies judgment and Christ Jesus is our Passover lamb. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So you understand the Passover. Passover is actually a time of judgment. Anyone who receives his life and nature is passed from death unto life eternal. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus was proved to be the Son of God, that is, God in human flesh, through many signs and wonders performed by His hands. He was the true character of God, His love, on display for all men to see. Prophet Isaiah exclaimed, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? But he was wounded for our transgressions. We recognize that Jesus was crushed wounded and beaten, that we should no longer be subject to sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities. He took our place of sin and death, that we might receive life. Your Excellency, we found this man causing trouble, stirring up sedition through the countryside, forbidding payment tribute to Caesar, claiming he is the Messiah and King. Are you the King of the Jews? We have no King but Caesar. Long live Caesar. What is this person? A fake and a dissident. Just look at him. Hmm. Are you the King of the Jews? You say I am. I'm not finding any guilt in this man. He's been stirring up the people. Now Herod must deal with him. But couldn't you? Take him before Herod. Take this headache directly to Herod. This won't solve the problem. This will change no I have heard much about you, and I must admit, I would hear more still, more about you. One little thing for me, please. You know who I am? Do you know that I have the power to take your life and throw it away, or to give it back to you? Beg. I want you to... There you go. 
Now you look like a king. Everywhere is quiet. Disciples are weeping. They too. Everywhere is quiet. Disciples now are hiding. They are ashamed. They are ashamed. Who shall tell? For he was caught out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was his stricken. He's despised and rejected of me, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Surely we hid our faces from him. Said he was despised and we esteemed him not. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And this Jesus was nailed to the cross. Judas is looking for salvation now. What can I do? He's thinking, who can bring him down? But he'd been paid 30 pieces of silver to sell Jesus. He rushes to the priest and says, please let him go, let him go. They say, no, we can't let him go. He drops the money. He couldn't believe Jesus was giving himself to die. And they put up that cross and there he was hanging. Now they listen to his voice. His once powerful voice got weaker and weaker. Jesus is hanging there. His head drops. He sees it is finished. Jesus Christ was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. That's what we find in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Hallelujah! The tomb is empty. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. What? Two angels were over there. The tomb is empty. He's risen. Yes. Remember St. John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse number 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth because Jesus is the word. In Second. Epistle of St. John, chapter 1 and verse number 2. Look at it. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Oh, I love this. Every time I read this, I'm so touched by the Spirit. It says, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us. The truth which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Glory to God. And then... The Bible shows us how important it is for us to walk in the truth. To walk in the truth. There's an expression in the word that is very important. It's called the truth of the gospel. In other words, you can hear the gospel in a generic sense. You can hear the word in a generic sense. But there is the truth of the gospel. Like when I was sharing with you a moment ago about Easter. What I did was to tell you the truth about Easter. 
You see, you've understood it in the general sense, but you needed to know the truth. What does the word actually say? So I let you know that the word actually calls that Passover. It was about Passover, not Easter. And I helped you understand truths. It's important that you understand truths. Then I told you where Easter came from. The use of the term. That's helping you understand truths. What does the word actually say? You know, people say things that sound like maybe God might have said so. And then you read the word and it doesn't say so at all. Like when I talk to you about um, medicine and uh, uh, pharmacy, I showed you from the scripture what it actually says. And then how that the Bible tells us that through pharmacy, the world will be deceived. The nations of the world will be deceived. The word says so. Then I showed it to you. Now for anybody to ignore those truths, will be to endanger his life with hell. Let's, let's read further so you can understand the power of truth. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 5, for example, I want to show you something. It says, to whom we gave place, well, maybe we should read it from, um, from verse 1. Go to Galatians chapter 2 from verse 1. He's given a testimony of his own life, an experience that he had. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the, that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Did you see that? To whom we gave place by subjection? No, not for an hour. In other words, we didn't give them any place. Why? He says that the truths of the gospel might continue with you. You see that? He's talking about the truths of the gospel. Because they had heard the gospel, but they didn't know the truth concerning circumcision. A subject that he needed to explain with the word of God to them. So he says that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Go to verse 14, same book, same chapter. But when I saw that they worked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, now, um, if you read the whole thing, you see where Peter was making a mistake there because he had respect to the Jews that came from Jerusalem when he had been with the Gentiles. Let's read. But when I saw that they walked not, Peter and his companions worked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? In other words, Paul is saying that he, he had to rebuke Peter and correct him about something that he was doing. He, he was acting in a generic way, but misleading about the truth of the gospel. And Paul said, I had to take a stand and remind him of the truth of the gospel concerning circumcision. All right. Now, I want you to look at something very powerful here psalm 91 in verse 4 he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler in other words the truth protects you you see the truth protects you no matter what's happening around the world today if you have the truth God's truth, the truth of the gospel, it will protect you. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. A buckler surrounds you. 
You see, like a shield. A shield is only on one side, but this buckler goes all around. You are protected by truth. God's truth protects you. This is very important. Look at it. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So if you have the truth of God in your spirit, it will protect you. This is why I share the truth with you. This is why I open up the scriptures to let you know what the spirit of God is saying and what is happening in our world. And from God's perspective, what is the meaning from God's perspective? The truth will protect you in these days of evil. The truth will protect you. Only the truth can protect you. His truth, can you see it, is not political truth. It's not government truth. Look at it now. His truth, God's truth. Not what the World Health Organization or WHO or uh, United Nations, not what they're saying. It is God's truth, not what the media is saying. Not the news corporations. Not what is on social media. All that will never protect you. What will protect you is God's truth. Look at it now. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Hallelujah. Now go to another psalm. Psalm 57. I'm going to read to you from verse 1. And make sure you understand what's going on here. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me for my soul trusted in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Oh, I like it. Let me read this part to you from the NIV. It says, for the, um, well, part of it there goes with the title. Do not destroy Um, there's a little bit of a problem in the way the NIV here, the text, is mixing up introduction of subject with the actual verse. So be careful how you read it. It's almost misled us. So let's read from here now. Um, this is the 2011. Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. You see, you take refuge in the shadow of his wings until the disaster has passed. In other words, there's a hiding place until the time, the tempest is over. There's a hiding place until the trouble is passed. There's a hiding place until the crisis are over. There's a hiding place. Go back to the King James. I just wanted you to notice that last line um, where it says, until the calamities be overpassed. So the overpassed is, means uh, it's referring to when it's passed by. Praise God. All right. Verse 2. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven. Notice what it says here. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. God shall send from heaven and save me. So, truth protects you. Now, look at what this is going to do for you. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send for his mercy and his truth. So, you see... His truth will deliver me, save me from my adversaries. The truth of God will not only protect you, it will deliver you from trouble. It will save you. Look at it. It says God shall send his truth from heaven. Glory to God. How does he send his truth from heaven? By the spirit of God, by the Holy Ghost. His truth comes to you from heaven. His truth has come to us because the Holy Spirit now has come to live in us. And the Bible tells us it is the Spirit of God that knows the deep things of God. And so he reveals these deep things of God, these truths of God to us from within us because he now lives in us. His truth 
is made known to us by the Holy Ghost. Keep that scripture there. I want you to see something. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Glory to God. Next verse. My soul is among lions. Can you see that? It says, my soul is among lions. In other words, I'm in a dangerous place. I'm, I'm surrounded by lions. And I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. But guess what? The truth of God that sent from heaven delivers me from them. He said, I send truth to you from heaven. So the Holy Spirit has brought us truth. Truth protects you. Truth delivers you. Truth saves you. His truth is so important. So important. Let's go to the next verse. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. You see that? They themselves are falling into the pit. And they want to drag us into the pit with them. But God's truth delivers us from those pits. God's truth protects us, preserves us, delivers us from the pits that is set for us. Blessed be God. Look at the next verse. My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Hallelujah. I wake up. My glory, awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Hallelujah. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Glory to God. So you see how important the truth is. This mount is the mount of truth. And God is revealing his truth to you like never before. And you're going to walk in truth. It is so important to walk in truth, to understand truth, to know truth. God's truth protects you. God's truth delivers you. God's truth saves you. No wonder he says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Blessed be God. Open your heart to truth this month. To his truth, not circumstantial truth. No, not truth from men. His truth, for his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. It is the month of truth. And truth, God's truth will prevail. God's truth will triumph. Hallelujah. Spread his truth everywhere. Tell his truth to the untold. And then remember, this month from the 12th to the 16th of April, we will have phase three of season three, your love word. It's going to be so powerful. We're continuing from where we left off, the last phase, and it's so, so important that you learn and know what God's plan is in this day and how to walk in these times. I can't overemphasize to you how important this is. Don't miss this next phase. Tell others, tell others about it. It will show you the depth of Christianity, what it really means, what the word has brought to us. What God expects, how to live, and how to win in this world in which we live. Praise God. Talk to the Lord right now. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for his love. Thank him for his kindness. And worship him. Hallelujah.